if you catch a knife on any chart, I don't know, maybe we could just go to a four hour spot and see where we can catch a knife. Here, backside trend. Oh, actually, it's right here, right? Untested hold, or presumably it could be the base of a move right here. Catch a knife, it's, it's going to bounce in the other, other direction and, and ladder the move. So it would go there, it would ladder this here, which would ladder this here, which would ladder this here, which would ladder, you know, and so forth and so forth until you break that trend. The ladders would just continuously hold against the target, right? So, so or, or against the, uh, the hold level. So the hold level hits. This would have to hold the move in order for it to get above its target, right? So that's fine. It can't hold its move. It falls right through. This, this is, everybody should know that at this point. This is perfectly common. This is exactly what would happen. And it's, it's going to go to the base of its move, right? So this is target is hit, goes to the base of its move. If it can hold the base of its move, and now we're going to go to XPT. This is where it gets fun. If it can hold the base of its move, right? We can delete this real quick and we can go here. If it can hold the base of its move, it's going to hold it through whatever trend it has, right? So it's going to, you know, it's created the base of this move. It's held it. It's it's holding the base of its move through its trend, right? Like this, and and so and so you're 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 right here right now on Bitcoin. It's the same thing, right? Like if, if this creates a base of a move on on this time frame here, you've got the weekly. Presumably, this can create a base. If this continues to hold, maybe it can use trends to break to bring it up, right? So the, and and then this creates another event, right? Like this is a complete. Oops. It's somewhere on the chart. I know that because I saw it paste. There it is. So this is, this is now another new type of event, right? So th this is event three. So this is event three. Base holding, like ba base of a move is holding. We'll, we'll just say that base of a move is holding. Okay. So the base of a move is holding, right? This, this is, you see it happening on Bitcoin right now, SMP, let's see if it happens. The base of a move is holding or not. So whatever this is, it could be right here, I suppose. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really quite sure where the level is in here. I actually haven't looked at this one. Maybe I can, I can quickly go take a look at it. Uh, yeah, you know what? It could be right here. That's fine. The weekly. It could, could be anything in this range that this hits, right? So, so it could be that. It could be this. It could be maybe it's even something bigger time frame. Maybe there's a monthly here. No, just a weekly. It could be a bi-weekly here. It could be a weekly level or it could simply have not been hit yet let's just maybe keep looking at this move to see if it actually gets hit it doesn't so there there is something in here presumably it's right here this is the whole level here okay that's fine so th that's presumably the whole level and then you'd have the ladder point right here right so you'd have this ladder point right here which is what it tries to hold and it can't so let's rewind this real quick to here and adjust our trend like so right could even go to the four hour charts here and you, you probably see where the collapse of the move happens and it can never quite get over that. At this point, it would have to pretty much ladder off of this, right? Or, or at least hold the base of a move. So th this is a different type of event completely, right? So now we can go back and talk about this. If this continues to, to be held, you'll create a new event here. Base of a move is holding. This actually never happens, but presumably this is what was attempted to have happened right here, right? You create a base here and you go after it. So there's something a little different about this move, which can be helpful, but not necessarily. You, you are trying to ladder this move. So you don't actually hit the base of this move. You do try to ladder it. I don't think that's what's happening here on S&P 500, but that's something you should always kind of be aware of. Like when you're looking at this and you're saying, oh, look, it's actually laddering its move, right? So you've got a base creating another base and laddering its move, right? So you, you always have to kind of look at that as well and not just say, okay, your job is to identify what the event is that's happening and, and not to force an event to fit in a criteria. Like right here, you can say, okay, here's, here's the base of a move, right? And let's maybe mark this a little better here, right here. Here's, here's what could be the base of a move. Like I know this is true, right? And, and so instead of trying to force this to be the square block into the round hole, um, we can see it's, it's possibly also laddering. If it never actually hits this base, it's falling through to go down to its next base of a move, right? So it's, it's not your job to sit here and say, this must be this event. You, rather, it is to create the possibilities and then understand what event is happening, right? So just, just like here, like we can see, here's a base of a move. Here's a base of a move. It's going to presumably ladder to the next base, right? So you've got this right here. So, so we'll, we'll look at that after, right? Because this could be what's the base for the future, right? So let's go here and... Look at this, and we're going to go back to the. Uh, actually, you know, we're going to leave it on the, the daily because this is uh, getting pretty violent here on SMP. So again, you have your trend, um, you have your move, 
And, and this is, this is the exact same thing that's happening, right? Event base of a move, right? Target is hit. Are, are we creating the base of a move? If this continues to hold, which it's not, you can see that this will be what it needs to break in the future, right? Like this is not what's happening at all. You can tell right there in that moment that it's not, when you start to fall through it like that, you can tell that this, this base is collapsing, right? <clears throat> and and so, so you have a, a knife catch on the other side. You have your untested level, you have a knife catch. And, and so the proper event to identify here now, you, you get rid of all this and you, know, you can get rid of all this. This is no longer relevant. None of that is relevant anymore. Now, now you've got presumably what could be the base of the move in the future, right? We can call this, we have event two, target is hit, event 1.5. We're going to leave this until this uh, move goes forward a little more. And, and we can delete this, right? So, so now we're in a completely different scenario here where, where you've got a couple days of action, right? Or I guess this would be about two weeks. That's fine. Two weeks of action. And uh, you see where this move breaks up. And we can actually identify the target on the top side here, which would be right here, which is target, right? We, you're, you're just back at, at target is hit, right? So you just go here and uh, target is hit perfectly fine. Great target is hit on the SMP. And, and this will create now, we're going we're gonna to make new events. Event number, we'll just call this one. We're going to start all over. Event one, base of a move for the future. This, this is a possible base. Of, this isn't confirmed yet, but possible base of a move for the future. Also, what else is this? This is also polarity to bring it uh, up and over its trend. So, so uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Possible base of move. Polarity on reverse trend, right? So you've got polarity on reverse trend, base of a move. Break over this and use this trend to, to take you into uh, an uptrend for the future. So, so this is kind of the point in the future for S&P 500 that will just constantly hold this move down. And, and this is possibly going to create the base of this move. So, so you'll see over time that S&P will kind of go here and do whatever it does. Maybe it goes like this, 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 this. And then when it breaks over this, that's polarity, right? But this is possible base of a move. So on, on S&P, this should definitely be an area where if it's, is, you know, it comes here, you can short it. Or if it tries to get over it and it's, it just quite can't, you short it. And the second it gets over it, you know, you're out because you're, you're possibly coming here. But you're, you're talking about this, this event probably isn't going to happen for, for quite some time. And then, and then you're going to be at the same reverse trend. So, you know, maybe a couple different scenarios that can happen is you could come here, test this, break over top of it, go like this, and then, and then fall back and create some base of a move here or whatever it is. Or you come out to here and then, and then this becomes your target, right? Like this reverse trend will end up being your target for the future until you break over it. And at that point, you'll make a new hold level off of a, a reverse level, which again is something we'll <clears throat> talk about another lesson. Reverse levels, reverse transfer. Right? So the event here is possible base of a move, right? This is kind of the, uh, the, the, the lowest it would go in, in this current move where it is. So we can actually go and uh, just kind of hit play here. Yeah, and there it is again, trying to uh, hit that level. And oh, it's actually right there right now today. What the we'll talk about good timing. Holy Hannah. That's, that's like impeccable timing for this thing. So this, this is actually trying to get back up and over that now. Look at the larger scale of things here, right? So, so you come back to this move. You have event one, possible base of a move, polarity on reverse trend, right? Event number, we'll call this one two. This could be a possible base of a move for the future, right? Possible base in the future. Possible base in the future. Event number three, we'll call this. Event three. This is indeed the base of the move, right? Because you've already kind of created that there, possible base for the future. And this would be the base of the entire move, which if you create now, the, I guess the important information here is you create a base here. If, if that breaks, you fall down to this untested level right here because these bases won't hold the move anymore. This one won't because it's already tested. This one can, but ultimately it will fail down and, and go to this creating the kind of the whole level, which will create the base in the future. So, you know, the important thing about events, now we can go look at Bitcoin. The important thing about events is, again, identifying what's happening in the charts to make sure you understand what's going to happen next, right? And this is a little more complex than what we've been doing because it's a lot of chart work. It's a lot of kind of thinking of what could possibly be happening. 
so I'm going to do this a bit on, on Bitcoin right now. So, you know, you have these levels marked out and what, what do you make of this? Right. So, you know, you're on XPT right now. And then, so you would be, where is it? Why is my marker not working here? So you would be right here, I believe. And that ladders it to here. So you, actually you can just start this from the top. You've got untested right here. So this is fine. This, you know, top of the move is, is right here on Bitcoin. This is already tested to ladder, right? This has not tested to ladder the move yet. So, so, you know, the top of the move. So let's do the same thing here. So now we're going to create some events. So event one, top of the move, where can it possibly go to at a max? Well, this is where it can go to at a max. It can't go past that, or it could create the base of a move here, right? So we can say event two would be possible base, right? This is a possible base for the future. This is what's laddering the move, right? Event number three, you have this right here. We don't want to worry about that. I'm more concerned about the top of the move and the possible base. Big difference here. This ladder is a move down long term. This creates a point that can break it into polarity into a new all-time high, right? So very different, right? So, so top of the move is what I would be looking at unless I'm given a reason to think otherwise. And then so you have this right here, which is not anything. Base of the move would be whatever this level is right here. So, so this is the uh, base of the current move. So event three. Base of the move again, right? So, so this is the base on the top side. Like we can see that as clear as I think. This is the base on the top side. This breaks up and over its range, you're, you're going to go and test a different event. So that's also key information here is that when you have these events, you're going to have, okay, well, you've got a, a hold level here. You've got backside here. You've got this hold here. You've got this here, which is possibly creating another base. You, you've got all these levels and fine. So 10.7 might stop it. But ultimately, when you break this base, you're, you're going to be gapping into these higher ranges up here, right? So, so you can see the way that that works is where you, you have these events that lead into each other. So that, that's fine. That's the top side. Let's work on the bottom side. So we know kind of what's happening here on the top side. And, and fine, you can you know, go here and you know, mark your trends and, and fine, we'll add the trend just to uh, make this a little more complete. You had your trend like this, the highest time frame trend that we could possibly have. You can go to the weekly charts and so fine. You can, you can see and we'll make this one white. This is the largest time frame. Just, just to get a complete picture. And, and then we'll go back to the weekly. So, so you can see, you know, you, you've got the events of your move, right? Base of the move, top of the move, possible base for the future, right? So this breaks it up into a range that's up in here, right? So event three and event two are much in the same here as to where event three gaps the polarity to the top of the move. And then this event two gaps the move to this range in here. Possibly this again, this 13 level, right? So the, you've, you've, you've got what, what could be the very top base. So I guess we can mark that one too. That's kind of an important one there. Event four, final polarity. Final polarity in the move, right? Like you break over this, you have nothing left holding you. All these bases, all these origin points are broken. And, and you're back. The only thing that could stop you at this point is some, some level in here, if there even is one. Uh, I guess we could go take a look. This right here would be your, your final moment, right? And, and fin final moment for Bitcoin. We can call it that. We can call it the event five final moment, right? Event five. Final moment. So you have these defined events now in this chart as, as to, give, to, to, to fill the gaps into what's going to happen with this move, right? You break the base of this move, you're going to go to the top of this move, right? So you, you, you break the base of this, right? Let's see. You've got probably about 12% here, 13, 14, oh, 14%. Wow, not bad. So you've got 14% here. You break the base of this move. You, you go to the top of this, which is going to create a ladder point, right? Which, which could possibly just be the ladder point for the future. Now, this being hit versus this being hit are two completely different events that will get created in the future, right? One is a ladder point off of this the, uh, and this, by the way. So, so one is a ladder point off of both of these. The other event is just a singular ladder point that's possibly breaking its move, right? So if you think back to the S&P lesson there that we had where a base is created, 
once they are created and back tested, they will no longer respect their move. So let's quickly go through that. Right. So we're in this move. This has already been tested. It won't hold it again. This is the top of a move, but here's the base. So if we do end up coming back up to this range, don't expect that to be held. Just, just expect it to either come to this move, creating a base break for the future, right? Because once this base is hit and created, it won't continuously sit there and, and just bounce off of it because it's already, one, it's tested level, two, it's the base of a move. And, and then it just creates further polarity, right? Like, like this will create further polarity here. This is the base of this move has already been tested. So once this breaks, you're, you're just going to come to this untested level to ladder the move. If you stop here, you still need to test this base in the future. So that, that's a big, big difference. And I'm not even convinced that this is a base that's important. It's, it's possible, but I'm more convinced that this final polarity is the, uh, the, the base that needs to be tested. So you know, in, in a moment where you kind of break this trend, you could come all the way up, test this, pull back, go to this base to create that as a break point for the future, right? Or you could come and just hit this base and, and pull back, right? Pull back completely. Or you could hit this and, and just never come to this base, right? But very, very different outcome based on the event that is being triggered. Let's work on the bottom side of it now. So, you know, we, we've got these kind of different events that are going to happen and what we know will happen thereafter. Like this, this event here, base of the move, we know this is going to break. So, so we are more looking to take longs down here if we start to break up, which I'm not convinced we are yet. But hey, that, that could change. We're very quick. We're very, we're very, very close to that, you know, these final moments in this chart here. We've been talking about this for a few weeks. Let's work on the bottom side though. So we're going to take this one copy and paste just because I don't want to redo this. And we're going to put these ones in red, maybe just, just a little visual difference. And we're just going to start with event one on the bottom side. So event one, okay. Let's just clear this off and identify the first event. Untested level. Untested level, okay. So you've got an untested level down here. Great. You have something that can ladder the move long-term. I don't think we have anything on the weekly, which we don't. So we don't have anything on the weekly. This could possibly create that weekly point for the future, or you could be back down here testing this, which actually is should be more in the, yeah, again, we're on XBT. If we were on, on the other charts, like uh, the, the real charts, you would see that the level is actually right here. So we're going to possibly make this event number two, future base, right? We're not going to slip through this level. We're going to create a base first and we're going to see if we can ladder off of it. And this, so, so this is untested level ladder point, ladder point, right on, on the higher time frame, And then, and then you're going to have kind of a, a bunch of these levels in here like this. You're going to have all these daily levels in here where there are other ladder points. We've walked through this move and uh, so fine. You have this here, which would create the base on a smaller time frame and this here, which is untested, um, you've got a smaller four hour range here. You've got this right here, I believe was a 12 hour. No, it's not a 12 hour. Is it a four hour backside? I know it's one of these time frames because I've uh, done this with before. Right here, four hour backside right there. Which is this level right here? Okay, there's a level right there. That's where it was. So base of the move, it's it's kind of already set to break. So you've got you've got this right here. Possibly this right here is your next base point for the future. So this would be an identifiable base right here. This I wouldn't use. This is a clearly identifiable base that you can use. So so you've got all these smaller time frame levels, and we're not we're not gonna okay, fine. We'll we'll leave this one because it's already here. So fine, let's let's just create one more. I wasn't going to do the smaller time frame, so that's fine. We can event number, oops, event number, come event number three, future base, four hour. We're just going to mark this as four hours. So I don't get confused. Really. I wouldn't identify that as something important, possible base ladder point, base point, right. And, and, you know, comparing this to the top, what do you have? So you have the base of a move here and you know, what we should do is we should match these up, event three to event, 
event three to event three. So, so base of the move on the top side, base of the move on the bottom side. So we are actually going to base of the move. We are actually going to just forget that four hour and use this because I want to match up the events. So you have event three compared to event three. So you have the base of the move on this side, base of the move on that side. So if this is the break and go to the top of the move, where could this possible, where could this event bring you to, right? While this event could bring you to, uh, we're going to go, that's event one on the top side. So what we're going to do, try, sorry guys, I'm just trying to match this so I can make sense of it in a way that's event one is equal to event one. Top of the move, and we're going to call this bottom of the move. Top of the move, bottom of the move. So event one here, which is the actual ladder point in the move, can show you, okay, here's here's the top of the move. Here's the top of the move here. You break this range, you go down to the next untested level, right? So, so you break this range, you break this base of a move, it's already set to break. You could possibly stop here. So what you could do is all things equal, you could make it like this. This is the possible base of a move right here. You, we could put this in red because this is going to create a possible base for the future. This one right here, and I'm going to put it right in the middle because it's kind of, well, we'll go on the bottom of each one. So the bottom of this base of the move event three is equal here. So th this is kind of, you can almost see this almost like a Pandora's box, right? Base of the move, base of the move. This is a possible base for the future. This is a possible base. This is the top of the move. This is the bottom of the move, right? So there's a little different as to where this base here is above the top of the move here. This base here is also above, which if all things were equal, this would be below, but that's fine. It's not always going to be, you know, you're, you're not always going to try to force square block into a round hole.